Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to talk to you about a brand new piece of equipment that we picked up for our battery testing. As you know, we like to do our capacity tests and we're also expanding that out to do some more like overcurrent protection testing. You know, what does this battery do at a 100 amp draw? Does it kick out like it's supposed to? And the way we're going to do that is with this new Bouge RV, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this thing is a beast for a 12 volt system. Um, 2000 watts is the continuous rating. This thing will take up to 4000 watts peak for about a second. So if you have something that's a big surge, uh, as you first turn it on, this thing will crank out up to 4000 watts for a second, which is nice. You can kick up something that's right up there at that 2000 watt limit and be able to run it on the continuous side of things. So a lot of power coming out of this guy. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the exterior bits are on the inverter. So we've got our two grounded 110, 120 volt uh, AC outlets. So that's what we're gonna be using for like running a heater or something like that to really load up our batteries. On off switch, you've got a status light, you've got a power light, and you've got a remote, like a, uh, like a phone connection that I'll talk to you about in just a minute what that's for. And then a three amp, five volt USB, USB A outlet. And what's nice about that is you can run a pretty hefty charger. Three amps at five volts is really cranking it out there if you want to charge a phone, an iPad, your camera equipment, whatever it is. That's a lot of power. And then obviously you have your hardwire solution. If you don't have a plug on something, you want to plug direct into it, you can do that on 110, 120 volt side. Uh, back here on the other side, the back, the other side, uh, we've got cooling fans that are on demand. So as you turn it on, it's pretty much silent. And as you load it up and it gets hot, it will sense that and ramp up the cooling fans appropriately. And then they've thought about this, which is really nice. We've got our two hookups for the battery, positive and negative. But what's super nice about this is the studs, you get these caps off, or opposing, of course, right? Uh, so if you're trying to tighten up a connection or something like that, your opposing, your wrench is less likely to cross and short out. So stuff like that, you know, really makes a big difference when you're designing a part. Make sure that you help operators use it appropriately. Staggering lugs is a nice way to go. Um, some other features about this. So I talked about the remote status of it. We'll touch on this here in just a second. This is the remote display. So you can mount this guy in your RV or on your boat or your car, or whatever you've got, you can mount it. It's got an on off switch, 110 to 120 and a backlight. And it gives you all the information that's going on with it. Um, let me talk you through what it shows you. So once we boot it up, I'm just gonna read this to you. It'll tell you your input voltage, your output frequency, 50 or 60 Hertz. Output voltage, battery power, output power in watts, working status, and then it gives you some, some inputs on what kind of fault might be going on if you, if you overload it or something like that. So you'll get over temperature protection, over discharge, over voltage, overload, inverter temp, inverter switch, AC voltage switch, and backlighting. So you can get a ton of information without even having to do anything, without having to pull out your phone, without having to guess. You've got a display that you can mount you know, within reason, comes with a really nice long cable so you can route it to wherever you need to go and be able to run it just like that. So that is pretty handy. Um, it's also even better, speaking of handy, it's Bluetooth connected. Um, so once you get it set up, your Android, your iPhone, they've got a QR code right there in the manual, it takes you to the app store, download the app, sync it up to your inverter and get live status of what's going on with that as well super handy there. So let's go ahead and hook it up. One thing I do want to talk about, if you're hooking up an inverter for the first time, it's got some big capacitors in it and you'll get a pretty hefty spark on it. There's a couple ways to mitigate that. Um, the primary way I do is just find you a resistor. If you've got one, this, I don't even know what this is, pick something or some sort of load that you can put through it and use that to help keep the spark down, but don't be alarmed. You haven't shorted anything out but it is gonna load up those capacitors as soon as you touch it to a battery. So don't be alarmed. That's perfectly normal. So let's go ahead and hook up to the battery. So hooking up to the battery is no secret here. We're gonna start with a positive. We go washer, we go lock washer and 13 millimeter hex nut, which is nice because most of your batteries that are lithium these days have 13 millimeter battery bolts on them. Nothing fancy about this. Now these battery cables that you're looking at or these inverter cables do come with it. So they're included, which is nice. Don't have to worry about that. And now we're gonna go ahead with our ground side, kind of backwards. We got our washer, 
We got our lock washer and our 13 millimeter hex. My fingers would work. There we go, snug that joker up. And once we get this hooked up, I'll show you the remote display. And I will also try to trigger the overload protection. So uh, stay tuned for that. There we are. And we'll go ahead and put our cap on because why not? All right, so we are all hooked up. I've got this just kind of rigged up here, hanging on to the battery. And let's go ahead and turn it on. You're seeing my screen here as well. So I just kicked it on. And now I'm gonna plug in the connection to the display. There we are. And so you can see on, we are, I'm gonna overlay my phone here. You can see we are online with our inverter. We're at 13.4 volts. That agrees with the screen, 119 volts, frequency at 60, 60 hertz. 87 degrees, yes, it's hot here in Texas, even in the middle of September. And it gives you some other detail there. It gives you the running time of the day, maximum power output, which is cool to see, maximum voltage and minimum voltage of the battery. And it kind of gives you some battery over discharge times. So um, other here in real time, you see the voltage, the current and the frequency as well. You can also remotely turn it on and off via your phone. So. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is take a look at these two heaters over here. We've got 1500 watts here, and this one pulls about 1800 watts. So what we're gonna do is turn on the big dog and see what that pulls current-wise. And then uh, we're gonna ramp in with this little gizmo here, the 1500 watt, and try to overclock this thing. So like I said before, it is a rated at continuous 2000 watts. It will peak above that. It may hold a little bit above that, but we should see it fully disconnect once you get over that, just as that safety protection there. So we're gonna turn the phone back on and overlay it. Okay, phone's on. Let's plug in our stuff and start to ramp up our heaters. So we got our two outlets here. Now let's go ahead with number one. There we go. So we're pulling right here. You're watching our voltage of our battery take a dip. Our fan just turned on for our inverter. 14, 1500, 1600, 1800. As this starts to warm up, you'll see the wattage drop a little bit. So we're pulling pretty good, right? And as you can see on the amp, we're pulling 15 amps at 120 volts. So that's giving you the current draw of the AC voltage side. Okay, let's go ahead and kick on the other one. We're going to start spooling that up. We've got it on. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see that. There we go. That's better. All right, here we go. There's the 2000. Let's just go ahead and send it. There it goes. Okay, so what happened there? It kicked itself out. It said, too much, too much pulling. We got everything back up and running again, so the over discharge protection worked perfectly. You know, we were pulling well over 2000 watts and it dropped out just like it was supposed to. Very nice. Okay, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up our Bouge RV 2000 watt inverter introduction. You will see this thing being used for all of our future batteries working on that overcurrent discharge on our batteries. You know, this thing's 2000 watts continuous. Typically our 100 amp hour batteries are 1280 watts. Um, so we're gonna be able to overclock those things and check out the overcurrent protection on them. I'll put some links in the descriptions. Thanks for checking out our video today.